movie never. I've just been like eating like nonstop for the past two weeks. Like, you've been sick as hell. Yeah. I gotta figure out a way to like stop binge eating, but it's gonna be tough because eating is awesome. And I haven't <laughs> I haven't let myself eat for months and months and months and months. Okay. Not yet within it. <laughs> Do that stuff. <laughs> okay, lowering this a little bit. Wicked, that's really help helpful. Thank you so much. I will speak the hell up. I'll lower that music just a little bit. Hopefully that'll help as well. are missing. Damn it. What icons? All the icons on the screen. All the really nice ones that Techie made for us. We would have to end the stream to activate them, so I guess we'll do it out. Oh, well. Because it's a minute to show time. Oh. Shit. Sing, huh? Oh, I'm so stoked on that new, um... Twitch karaoke thing come. I signed up for the beta. I haven't heard anything about it yet. I think some people already got in. The beta for what? Um, Twitch things, I think it's called. It's like a karaoke thing. Oh, sweet. Hell fucking yeah, it is. Dude, I'm gonna sing. Uh. Oh, should we like? Let's go to like the intro screen and stuff. All right. Here we go. We are live. Ah, oh, sweet. Hello. Arsenic, new subscriber. Welcome, buddy. Good timing. Hey, man. Good to see you. Again. Welcome back, everybody. This is the LB stream. We are in episode 53. Hot damn. Are you making an L and a B? I tried. Nice. Bad. Um, but yes, welcome everyone to the LBS. This is not the Lagging Balls show. No, no, no. Um, on Lagging Balls, we talk about Blizzard games. On the LBS, we just talk about whatever we feel like, uh, you know. Because, cause, okay, like if we talked about Blizzard games on Fridays, then we'd have nothing to talk about on our actual show. Right, so. right. We'd get all of our thoughts and opinions and everything about all the things we're going to talk about on the podcast out here, and then that would just be redundant. Yes. And repetitive. Yeah. And redundant. 
<laughs> and repetitive. <laughs> It'd be stream redundancy stream, right? Woo! So, um, our topic for the evening is, uh, here on episode 53, is sex and subculture. So, um, <laughs> we got a whopper for you, folks. What? <laughs> a whopper? A whopper indeed. Why don't we start out by, um, defining what we mean by subculture? Does that work for you, Fist? Yes. Anything you want to talk about from your week first before we... Get going? No. <laughs> Although, I will say, um, holy shit, dude, like, just like coming home from BlizzCon and then getting strep throat and then starting a new job, like, all at the same time, like, I have I've hardly been playing video games and it's just been really shitty and, like, I haven't even talked to my raid team in, like, weeks and like I haven't talked to anybody. Like I haven't done anything. Like I feel like I've just been working, commuting, and sleeping. And I have. And like today has been like the first day in weeks that I actually feel like I have energy back. And like that's a new thing for me. Like I've never felt like I've never noticed my own energy levels, you know? I I often think that like a lot of people are more in tune with their bodies than I am. Uh and like the older I get, the more I'm like, huh. So if I sleep more, I'll feel better. Hmm, you know? I've just been like living like a teenager since I've yeah. been a teenager, you know? Like I've just been like eating junk food, staying up as late as I want, sleeping whenever I want. I mean, you know, within reason as far as like jobs and shit go. And just like, you know, wasting away in front of the computer playing video games, which is, you know, perfectly Our acceptable. favorite thing to do, of course, of yeah. Course. Like I'm not knocking that, of course. But that's just the way I've been living, and now that I'm getting older and like I'm sort of like less or like not at all indestructible anymore, indestructible like I felt like when I was a teenager. It's just, it's really weird. Like, is this, is this what happens when you get older? You just like start feeling bad. You start feeling things. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. Like, I feel like I've I've spent my whole life like trying to figure out my own mind and personality and shit like that but I've just been ignoring my body. And like, I know that I'm lucky enough to just like not really have anything wrong with me, you know, physically, really, that has like called my attention to that. Like yeah. then last year when I got the tendonitis or like, was it this year? Well, the beginning of this year. The what? I got that tendonitis, tendonitis, tendonitis. Um, that sucked. And it was like, it was kind of one of the first things that I've ever had that's, that's, you know, um, like affected my life uh, in a physical way and it kind of you know made me understand better like what people deal with when they have physical shit that they can't you know just walk off or you know forget about or ignore or take Tylenol for you know yeah 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 so, anyway um, so yeah so I'm feeling a lot better now um, I don't intend to take that for granted this time no, I'm going to try to be a little bit more thoughtful about being healthy and stuff, but definitely more thoughtful about getting back in game and hanging out with people online and chatting with the community and stuff like that, because I feel like I've just been gone for months. Well, what a transition period, right? Like you mentioned BlizzCon, obviously that's one thing, but we all know that you um, got this new job as well, and it's freaking awesome, and we're all really proud of you about it, but that's a hell of a change too, is so you have BlizzCon, crazy amounts of sickness, while starting the new job and like not enough time to recover in between so starting the new job with the sickness and like now you're two weeks into the new job and only just getting better that's crazy yeah it was a really weird situation because like you can't miss your first week of your first job right yeah i mean <laughs> not, not first job but new yeah and so like i'd just go to the work and i'd look like hell there was like a few days where my eyes were just like clouding up with mucus and like I couldn't talk because every time I talked, like my voice would go away, and then I'd like hork up some phlegm and have like a fever, and people would be asking me questions, and I'd be like, "What?" Yeah, new girl's a little out of it. I think she might be on drugs. New girl's a bit gross. So <laughs> whatever drugs think... make mucus come out of her eyes, I don't get it. Whatever that is. Ew, Canadians are gross. 
<laughs> yeah, it's a Canadian thing. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who's racist. But yeah, anyway. How, new job's great. How, how is the new job going? Um, really well. It's, uh... You know, you get a new job and, like, you keep telling yourself, like, it's okay that I don't know everything because I don't know everything yet. Uh, I'm, I'm going through that right now. Um, I'm trying my best to, like, learn as quickly as I can. And a lot of it's, you know, stuff that I can totally handle. Um, but uh, I just, like, I give so much of a shit about this job that I just... Yeah. You know, I don't want to... I just, I want to be, like, enthusiastic and... and a, beat about it 24 7 because it's literally just the coolest job and they're sending me and my coworker to the, the game awards um in december this is just in a Hell couple yeah. weeks so i get to go back to california and uh go to the game awards and that's not something that i'd ever thought that i'd be able to do um and we get to go and like try to interview people and get some footage and stuff like that um, that's spectacular yeah, I have to get like a gown or something. Like, fuck. will that be your first business trip? Yes. Awesome. Only a few Although, weeks into this new job, and you're on your first full-fledged business trip to the freaking video game awards. That's amazing. It would be cool when Overwatch wins esport of the year. Oh. Oh yeah, I said it. It's got. Jeff Kaplan's gonna run up on stage and punch everybody. <laughs> He'll be like, you want a fucking eSport? Here's Daddy Jeff with the SmackDown. They'll be like, and Overwatch in second place. And then he'll just appear in a wrestling singlet on stage. And he'll be like, no, no, first place, first place. We meant first place. Yeah. Threatening people always works, especially when it's <laughs> violent. <laughs> You've been in the U.S. too long, I think. Yup. Which, like, speaking of, there was just a shooting at the freaking mall, like, nearby in New Jersey tonight. Yes, yeah. Because Black Friday! Yay, America! Come on, guys! Alright, so, back to more interesting and positive things. Let's talk about sex! And subculture. So, um... <clears throat> we didn't... It was funny because like we were kind of reviewing the uh, views on our YouTube channel, and the ones that mentioned sex in the title obviously have the most views. <laughs> so um, we decided to stick that in too because like I know I'm like super, and you know if, if you've been watching this show for a while, you know that I'm like super interested in subcultures, and I think you are too, Thorn. I am. Um, we had some guildies in the past who are no longer in the guild. Um, long gone and we don't even speak with them anymore but they they used to be like good friends of of ours like you know in the, in the guild and and uh, we used to know them pretty personally um, and they were a couple who met in WoW yep. and uh, they uh, they were um, a BDSM oriented couple and I don't know about you Thorne but it was through them like that was my first um, exposure, uh, expo yeah, exposure uh, to that sort of thing, and like yes, my first sort of like, yeah, just like I got a really good understanding from them because like it wasn't just their fetish, you know, it was an actual lifestyle, and these two people were incredibly efficient at making it work in all aspects of their relationship and their actual lives, like their day life, like day to day lives and stuff like that, even in game. Um, so one was master, one was slave. Um, master would um, tell slave like, you know, what to do every day, um, how much slave could eat, when slave could sleep, how much slave had to work out, when slave could go to places, who slave could talk to, et cetera, et cetera. And slave would have to wear um, like a collar and cuffs at all times, uh, to be fair. Um, slave got um these really cool like custom ones made so they kind of look like jewelry but you right. could like screw on a leash a leash or whatever um and it was it was really difficult for me at first because when you're you're not uh into that sort of thing it's really really difficult to accept somebody giving away their free will like that uh in in all aspects of their life and uh only when you talk to this 
someone like this and they, they explain to you that like you know genuinely this is what i prefer right. this makes me happy and comfortable this makes my relationship work this is what i i'm happy right. you i'm know? not a prisoner i'm not suffering i'm not being held against my will right exactly um so you know it the the person in question would you know explain this to me and you know i i don't i don't judge people on this kind of stuff because like if i'm not into it like how the hell am i supposed to know you know like i don't know if it's good or bad as long as they're not hurting anybody right. who doesn't want to be hurt um it's it's fine right. like right. Kind of my business. <laughs> but like it, it just like that concept in particular like none of, none of the sex stuff none of the the community stuff that they're into none of None of that bothered me at all. Like that's their business. That's I understand people like different things, but just that in particular, like waking up every day with like a list of things you can and can't do, that was weird to me. But um, you know, eventually I I understood, and it, and it was a lot easier to understand that. Um, but it was cool because like I realized through them that there is a huge community of BDSM uh, people. <laughs> um, in World right. of Warcraft, um, it it really, um, I think it's it's easy because you know there's a lot of role play involved with WoW. There's a lot of um, I don't know. I I guess just the nature of the game, it was easy to play out a lot of fantasies or you know get your slave to do things for you or you know like um, this couple in particular. They were really into PvP, and so Slave had to be heals. So Slave would pocket heal um, Master in, like, right. random BGs or um, just stuff like that. And and I, through them, realized that, like, it's huge, like, in WoW. Like, a lot of people are of that persuasion in World of Warcraft, and I think that's really cool, actually. Yeah, I think it's a, kind of a not-as-well-known subculture that's pretty lively in the WoW community. Because uh, we're talking about one specific couple that we knew that was in our guild in particular, um, but the uh, master, the dom, in this relationship was also training other doms um, actively, some of whom were also in game on other servers. And then there were also um, one or two other people we knew, um, I think one or two of which were also in the uh, guild. Sorry, the music died there. One sec. Um, so, you know, that's that kind of clued us into how much was really going on. Um, and I definitely had some of the same considerations and concerns. You know, when we first found out about that friend, we were a little concerned for her. We thought that, you know, maybe she was being held against her will or something like that. It took some understanding and some enlightenment on our end. So definitely an interesting uh, point of view. Totally. Um, but, you know, like, aside from that, like, they they had their own community, they had things to go to, IRL, they had clubs, and uh, just, just people who live near them, who are the same way, friends, um, you know, no different than us going to BlizzCon or whatever, or, or some sort of, like, eSport event. Like, they would go to their things and stuff, and, and yeah, would, a lot of it would be about sex, but a lot of it would also just be, like, this is our lifestyle, and we want to hang out with people who are like-minded. Right. So was, that was a was big just... difference too. Like that's that's the easy way to tell the difference is that it wasn't just about sex all the time. The all the elements that that this mentioned, that you mentioned, were related to everyday life, related to the overall, related to far more. So it was the you know those those elements that you mentioned that, about like how much time to to work out. And like what you can eat and things like that that's that transcends sex by a whole lot that has to do with the larger uh relationship and that's where really the connection to subculture comes in full circle uh because it's not just like a a sexual act or a way of doing things it's not just one person being in charge of the other during sex it's a whole lifestyle exactly and i don't know like it was just it was really cool to befriend those people and get the, you know, not the whole scope, but like an, a personal scope of this subculture in particular. Because um, I think that, you know, it, it can be a little daunting from the outside um, and a little confusing. I think most subcultures probably are, actually. Um, but when you, when you just like know somebody who's a friend who 
is willing to open up and just sort of like explain you know their lifestyle and how they feel about things and, and what makes them tick and why it works for them like it's it's really fucking interesting oh yeah and i think like a lot of things that um fascinates me about subcultures in the first place is that like there's just there's so many different ways to live as a human and there you know there's some things that all of us have in common and things that all of us need to do to get by but like we certainly do not all need to live the same way and like all the same things and think the same things you know like if if you feel differently inside than you think most people do um you know you, it's up to you to, to find whatever that is and if it makes you happy and if it's what you want then it's up to you to to live it as much as you can and of course the internet makes that so easy and conventions make that so easy and i just i don't know i think we should celebrate that shit you know absolutely like, in in the gaming community and, and more specifically the blizzard community which i know most of us are part of like we get a chance to celebrate that every year at blizzcon and and so often in game and and like you know I, I hesitate to say there's no like weird sex stuff involved with blizz community but that's not true <laughs> we all have that. um None that I've seen yet, but I hope there is. <laughs> hey man. Is, it's, it's out there. Is the is the Blizzard community a subculture? I mean it basically is, right? I mean let's okay, so let's go back to the definition for a second. Um, according to the Wikipedia page, a subculture is a group of people within a culture that differentiates itself from the parent culture to which it belongs, often maintaining some of its founding principles. Subcultures develop their own norms and values regarding cultural, political, and sexual matters. Subcultures are a part of society while keeping their specific characteristics intact. Examples of subcultures include hippies, goths, and bikers. Uh, the Oxford English Dictionary defines it as a cultural group within a larger culture. I'd say so. Yeah. I mean, often having beliefs or interests at variance with those of the larger culture. Like, take the founding beliefs of Blizzard itself, you know? Like, we all take those to heart, right? People who work at Blizzard take those very seriously. And I think that we do as well. And I don't know, like... Today is literally the 14th anniversary of World of Warcraft, and a lot of us, you know, know who we know and are who we are and, and like what we like because we've been playing WoW for so long, you know? And, like, yeah. Overwatch is exploding into this culture of its own, and... You know, like with with Overwatch League and stuff like that, and and I don't know, like I think the gamer community and culture is a subculture. I think we have enough, I don't know, like inside nomenclature and and rituals and things that we all like and believe um, that it could be. Um, we just need to work on all the sex stuff. Or not work on it, as in um, make it more prevalent. Yes. But um, so the, in my opinion, and I don't have a very strong opinion because I don't know everything, but in my opinion, the opposite of that would be the furry community. Um, I'm not a furry, um, but a lot of the times I, I wish I was. I don't know why. Um, I just, I think furries and other kin and other kin are people who believe that they are uh, animals in human bodies like they feel like they're more in tune with their animal selves than their human self um, those two subcultures um, fascinate me and uh, I think it's it sucks because furries um, they have a really bad rep um, mostly because like people who don't really take the time to you know understand what they what they're all about just focus on like the weird sex stuff yeah. Um, and yep. I say weird sex stuff because, you know, it's weird to people yeah, outside yeah. of the To normies. Yeah. And, like, there was that episode of, like, CSI or some shit like that um, that had some sort of, like, furry orgy in it. And that was, like, the biggest um, uh, example of furries in pop culture. Um, and then that's... You know, oh, kind great. of where people go. <laughs> oh, you know, furries. They just they just want to dress up like animals and have sex. Which which, by the way, what's wrong with that? You know, like if if people want to go and dress up like animals and have sex with each other in their animal costumes, why not? Right, more power to them. 
what a, like why not like people dress fucking weird to have sex all the time like just because you wouldn't dress up like an animal and have sex with somebody who's dressed like an animal doesn't mean it's it's fucking weird you know right yeah which goes for most of the subcultures that we're talking about a lot of a lot of times the reason they're even called a, a subculture is because obviously they don't fit in and a lot of times they're looked down upon by the normal or mainstream society um, no matter what they are but especially yeah. with sex stuff People yeah. are really quick to judge on sex stuff. I wish people would just like accept that humans, like as long as humans are around and breathe air and do things and know things, it's going to be connected to sex because like when it gets down to it, that's all we really care about. That's, right. that's just how we're wired, you know? It's like, hey, I like this cool thing called World of Warcraft. How can I make it sexy? <laughs> you know? Or like, hey, um, I really love my couch and the way it feels. It's so silky. How can I have sex? <laughs> you know? It's just, it's, it's, it's always that. Or it's just like, hey, I'm a completely vanilla, boring person uh, who just, you know, goes to work and comes home and, and watches TV. I would like to have sex now. You know? Like, it's, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, like, how you like to do it. Like, everybody does. And the people who don't, they have something to sort of like sub into that, you know, like asexual people. It's like, right. no, they're not interested in sex, but, you know, they still like closeness. Maybe they still like people nearby. Maybe they, you know, get super jazzed when they can hold somebody's hand for a few minutes, you know, like there's there's always something in humans that is or is close to wanting to do it a bunch. Yeah. And like, I feel like the more we repress that, the more fucked up we're all just going to be. The, but, uh, I, the more fucked up all the mainstream will be, but all the subcultures will be plenty healthy, thank you very much. <laughs> exactly. So, also, I mean, was... there's nothing wrong with being mainstream either, right? It's just a matter of, like, the level of judgmentalism going on. Yeah. Um, but I, uh, at BlizzCon, my favorite furry was there. Um, I didn't really know I had a favorite furry, but this this furry in particular is, is famous. And so I know, I knew of the furry in question, and I, like, she's not, uh, like, a Blizzard-related animal or anything like that, but she was just there, and I knew her name, and I walked up to her, she was at Calm for the Storm, and I was so stoked, because, like, I don't, I don't have any, I hadn't had any interactions with, like, real-life furries, and I was just super stoked to meet her, um, but the thing is, like, she doesn't talk, she squeaks. So, you know, I just walked up to her and I, you know, I said, hey, I know you. I, I think you're really cool. Uh, you're super cute. Can I take a picture with you? So I got a picture with her, but like, I look really dumb and it's kind of blurry. So I haven't posted it. Oh, no. But that was cool. Um, and I saw her again on the escalator. Um, but then on the last day of BlizzCon at the Marriott, there was a furry there. And uh, he was like talking. And I went up to him and I'm like, hey, you know, like, I think you look really great. Um, uh, can I call you a furry? Like, it, is it, you know, like, I don't, cause like, so, you yeah, know, people come up to me or something. Sure. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, is, is that like a, cause you know, some people call me a Canuck and like some Canadians don't like that. Some don't, most don't care, you know, but like, Do you not like that. I don't care. I, I don't. But like, if somebody said dirty Canuck or something like that, it might hurt, you know, but like. But I, I just wasn't sure. So, I, you know, I came up to him and I'm like, can I call you that? And he's like, yes, absolutely. That's what I am, obviously. And I'm like, okay, I was just checking. He let me hold his tail. I got to pet his nose. What? Um, yeah, it was pretty great. Um, Does that mean anything I, to hold their tail? Or? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't you know. might be married. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Congratulations. But, uh, thank you. Um, but he was cool. And uh, I don't know. It was just, it was neat to to go up to this person and just have like a real conversation and like you know talking to somebody who is dressed like a giant dog or a fox or a wolf or, or whatever um, what was that one dressed as i think it was like a wolf like a blue wolf or something um but you know it, it wasn't it's not like it's jarring to go up to somebody dressed like an adorable animal you know and, and especially when they speak back to you you know like a normal person would um, and are very patient and kind with your weird questions like it was is I I don't I just don't understand what the what the big deal is yeah I mean, 
most love mascots and shit, right? I was just gonna say that should be the thing that most people are exposed to is at least mascots, who are a lot of times wearing the same uh, proportions of costume, right? Where it's a yeah. full body thing. There's a maybe oversized head kind of thing. Uh, so there's there's a f level of familiarity there. You just I think like a lot of mainstream people are accustomed to it being in a certain scenario. And outside of that, seeing somebody in a furry costume, is it a furry costume? Or? It's, it's it's more like who they are, you know? It's not so much a costume as it is a representation of how they feel. I don't know what you would call it. Sure, yeah. So that's <laughs> it's hard to navigate some of that stuff because if you're not familiar, you could very easily use words that are not very nice or possibly harmful. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which so, I, uh, I just want to give a disclaimer for this show. We don't purport to know very much about any of this stuff. No. So when it comes to these things, we're definitely, you know, talking about it because it's interesting and trying to expose the ideas and things like that. But we, you know, don't don't take our word for it. If you're interested in any of this, definitely check it out for yourself. Do some research. Um, and don't take our nomenclature on this show as official and the way to go about it. Because we don't necessarily know. So. Not at all. <laughs> I don't, I hardly know anything. I just, I just know that I think it's really cool. And like... Another subculture that I often bring up on the show are other kins, and I think they're also called Therians? Therans? Something like that? Okay. I definitely butcher. I have no idea. But um, it's basically just people who, like I said, don't think that they're human internally. You know? Like, they, 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 they visualize themselves and they see themselves as an animal, not a human, and they feel trapped by their, like, physicality because that's not who they are and like i would never dare to um sort of like liken that to you know uh somebody who uh needs to transition sexes like i don't know if that's the same thing at all and i, I wouldn't right. ever say that but that's what it makes me feel like you know like some some people are genuinely born in the wrong sort of body for them and then they feel that they need to go through a transition to become who they actually are. And I respect that. Is, um, that's different than other kin, though, right? I, I, I like would think so. Isn't because that transsexualism like, that you're talking about? I don't know. I just... It's definitely not the same thing, but like, I feel like it's a similar concept. It's like, if you look at yourself and you physically don't look like how you feel inside, that's, that's troubling, you know? Like, yeah, that's absolutely. a real problem. Yeah. Um, but for other kins, like, there's not a lot they can do about it, obviously. Um, because you can't, you know, turn into animal. And I think, like, the thing that really attracted or, like, caught my imagination, um, with this whole subculture is that, like, when I was a kid, my favorite thing to do in the whole world was to imagine that I was an animal. Like, that was the only thing I ever wanted to do, was yeah. play animals. And, like, I feel like I was a little bit of a late bloomer, because, like, you know, getting on in, like, little kid years, like, I was still, like, I, I want to be a cat. Like, I want to be a lioness. I want to be a unicorn. I want to be a bird. I want to be a whale. You know, like, I, I want to be an otter. I, I was a beaver a lot, because I'd build dams and stuff. Like, I just... That's cute. Yeah, but, like, I just put so much, like, effort and time into, like... You know, like, trying to fucking imagine what it would be like to be an animal and just, like, try to move like one and, and think like one and act like one. And it was, it was, it was escapism, you know? For me, it was, it was immersing myself in this fantasy. And I think, you know, my love of World of Warcraft um, definitely plays into that because, like, I can go into that game and, you know, be something else and be, like, almost completely fully immersed in something different, you know? than I actually am. And so I think that just the, the idea of these people who, you know, weren't necessarily just playing around like I was as a kid, but like actually feeling these feelings and feeling like an animal and, and feeling more comfortable in their heads as who they really are as some kind of animal than who they actually are as some kind of human. Um, I can get behind that, you know, like, and I, sometimes like I wish so hard that I still had the like the same kind of imagination and creativity that I did as a kid to like literally feel like something else that wasn't human you know I don't yeah, know yeah. 
it's that's just my take on it i guess but like well it's you know it's nice that you have a, a connection to that like I, I, I at least on some level because i i did plenty of like make believe and play as a kid but i don't think i ever felt like i was like that deep into it so yeah i don't know it probably has nothing to do with it but i don't know like i'm i i'm glad that it you know i don't know the thing is like there's a lot of really great free documentaries on youtube about these things lots of free documentaries i know there's a bunch of um at least there's i think there's at least or there were two documentaries on netflix about bronies which is another subculture i'm into because when i was a kid <coughs> i was fucking huge into my little pony holy shit dude hell yeah like, Unicorns and Pegasi and shit like that? Fuck yeah. Tell them about Fucking your collection. Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> I, like, I have like a massive My Little Pony collection. Like fucking massive. It's huge. That's awesome. Um, yeah, but like I think it's... I think bronies are cool because their entire subculture is based on the new, newer My Little Pony thing called Friendship is Magic. And they literally take that to heart you know like their their whole culture is based upon friendship and that friendship is magic yeah. and like what's wrong with that exactly <laughs> like how like how wonderful you know like how fucking wonderful and like you know people like oh but it's a cartoon or no, no, no. it's like so what so fucking who, who cares there's like cultures based on like hate and horrible things you know and this culture is literally based on like friendship and cute, adorable ponies and cartoons and, and how dare they? Yeah, and being nice to each other and like I I think that like if you've got a friend or know people who are bronies, like you're probably really lucky to have those people in your lives because like how wonderful is that? Like I can't I can't imagine. And like yeah, I'm sure there's a probably a shit ton of weird sex stuff. Like I've definitely seen some weird My Little Pony porn um, just because you know I. Yeah, but, check that but stuff out. Like, to be clear, though, being a brony does not mean that you were interested in seeing My Little Ponies um, engage in sex acts, or that you were interested in having sex with My Little Ponies. That is not at all what that's about. But, you know, it is present occasionally. Sure. Like, all subcultures have a little, a little extra something, you know, a little flavor. A little extra something, a little extra flavor? Just a little extra flavor. But, uh... But yeah, so, um, moving away from wholesomeness, well, not moving away from wholesomeness, but like moving into maybe not like so much a subculture as it is more of like a fetish. Well, it's not even a fetish, really. It's, um, what's it called? When, when people are like not only sexually attracted to objects, but like they engage in relationships with them. The objectum sexuality? Yeah, something like that. There's a really great um, documentary on YouTube about, I think it's like the woman who married the Eiffel Tower or something like that. And it, it follows two women who are um, very much of that persuasion. And it's fucking cool. Let me, and let me let tell me you what. It real quick. Object sure. sexuality or objectophilia. Is a form of sexuality focused on particular particular inanimate objects. Individuals with this preference may have strong feelings of attraction, love, and commitment to certain items or structures of their fixation. For some, sexual or even close emotional relationships with humans are incomprehensible. Some objects of sexual individuals also believe in animism and sense reciprocation based on the belief that objects have souls, intelligence, feelings, and are able to communicate. Okay, so... Well, again, like, I I don't know anything about it other than what I saw in the documentary. I can only imagine that, like, you know, this this sort of, like, lifestyle is probably really fucking difficult to live with, you know, Bad. in Holy normal crap. But at the same time, like, I can't help but, like, think about just, like, how fucking amazing would it be to not only be, like, like have a super massive boner for... For instance, uh, this woman, she was like a world-class archer um, in the Olympics and everything because she was in a relationship with her beau. Oh my God. Um, for a long time. Um, but on the side, she was also 
officially married to the Eiffel Tower. She had like, uh, she was really into the Berlin Wall. Um, she, and she'd like walk past like fence posts and like, like the railings on bridges and stuff like that. And she'd get like hot and bothered, you know? And like, she had like this piece of fence in her room that she would just like get down with whenever she felt like it. Um, but how awesome would it be to like, I don't know, just like have a chair in your room who was your significant other, who you could totally just like do it with whenever you felt like, um, and just have this like meaningful relationship that actually, you know, fulfilled you because that's the way you are, you right, know? That's, and I think those two words that you just mentioned, meaningful and fulfilling, are the part where people have trouble. I, I have trouble. I'm trying to understand that, but I don't, I don't truly understand how that works. I get that some people are, you know, able to do that, obviously, but I, I don't get it, and I don't know that I could. But uh, you know, huh. that's that's why it's harder to understand. That's why it's harder to swallow, if you will. Totally. Yeah, kitty. But for these people, like, it's enough. And you know, if if they're in a relationship and it's meaningful and fulfilling, like I said. Um, you know, like, if you can just be happy with that fence post or chair or whatever in your room and also just get down with it whenever you feel like and also have all the, like, side objects that you get down with also, like, aside from, you know, like I said, it probably being really difficult to deal with in everyday life and stuff, how awesome would that be, you know? So it's just like, Hell yeah. yeah, I'm in a relationship with this chair and we get down every day, but I also have like the side fence and this side chair and the side building, and it's really hot and steamy and it's fucking it's fucking sweet, you know? Yeah. Like, and then you would never really have to deal with a human relationship, because like, honestly, like okay, and, like if you got the same amount of fulfillment and pleasure and joy and happiness from a chair, who didn't talk back, like, how is that worse than like you know? talking to some dude that you like who like goes to you every couple days you know who hardly ever yeah. like yeah. Which talks weird. back you know and that's like, that. like harder to understand as well because in, in human terms we look we think of that as cheating whereas maybe for objects it's not quite the same or there's a different type of relationship or a different way that you determine Sorry, I let the cat out of the room, and immediately the poster falls, one that he was knocking off the damn wall to begin with. This is how most of the stream will be spent, guys. It's me just pushing the poster back up. I think you should just let it down. Just leave it, dude. No. I like this poster, and I want it in the background. Right. I'm fine. Um, but yeah, again, and like, I'm trying really hard not to make jokes about this, but like... You know, obviously, there's jokes of bounds, you know, like this, I really, really, like, definitely check out this documentary because it's fucking fascinating. And it ends, like, I don't want to give it away, but I'm going to anyway. It ends with this, hey. this woman who's married, who's married to the Eiffel Tower, literally getting down with the Eiffel Tower on camera with other people around. Is this X-rated? awesome. No, you don't see nothing, but she's wearing a skirt. Damn. It's awesome. Oh, and then, so there's another woman in the documentary as well. She's really into this, like, you've probably seen clips of her. She's really into this, like, um, old uh, amusement park ride. And it's, like, super rusty and, like, it doesn't work anymore. But she just, like, you know, she's totally in love with it. And it's... Do you happen to know what it's called so we can link it for people? I think it's, like, the woman who's married to the Eiffel Tower. Something like that. But, um... Like there, there's that stuff, and it's you know, it's it's kind of funny, just because the whole concept is a little bit silly. I know it's not silly to to you know the people, but like you know, watching it, it's a little bit silly. But like, it's also just really cool to to see people have like real human emotions towards inanimate objects, and it just it's sort of I don't know, it's cool, it's cool. I I think it's cool, and sometimes I'm envious. Like absolutely, some, it's very some, yeah. Sometimes I just wish like oh, fuck, you know, like I wish. I was just really into my computer chair, and then I'd be fucking set, you know? Because, like, you know, computer chair would be here with me, gaming all the time, holding my butt, you know, touching it, touching on it, you know? You know? It's it's nice, it's, you know? <laughs> I don't know, like, I'm just saying, like, I don't know. I know, that's why, that's why it's, like, so hard, like you said, not to make jokes, because... Yeah. <clears throat> 
some of it is just like it's so hard to understand. I, I did um, link the trailer uh, and a profile about the documentary for anybody who is interested. It's in the chat. Um, you can take a look there. Um, I didn't see it on Netflix. It's on YouTube. Oh, on YouTube. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I love watching those free documentaries on YouTube. You learn a lot of stuff. But yeah, so I, I don't know. I think that's that's kind of all of the subcultures that I really wanted to talk about. Well, but well, there is um, there is a one piece of one of them that we that we covered that I discovered by accident, um, and it's called Heel Sluts. And there is actually a subreddit for this. Um, it's our Heel Sluts, and um, I thought it was like a joke at first. Um, I'm not sure if it's entirely related to Overwatch. But most of the posts on there are Overwatch related, and it's specific to a Master Slave Dom, possibly BDSM kind of relationship, where there are specifically people who are like pocket only. So it's like often a Mercy who is pocketing a Master, and that's it. That's the whole thing. But they're like, before I could even try to like make a joke or laugh or anything about that one of the top posts the day that I went to look was somebody thanking everybody on the sub because they felt really fulfilled by this, they were really thankful that they'd found their master and found a fulfilling relationship here on the sub, and so uh, what an amazing, like, turn from something that I thought was a joke or something that I thought was like I don't know, I thought it was like I thought it was like a meme page, you know? Nope. And I heard that like do you hear the word heel slut you definitely think it's like a meme but no there's literally a, uh, an entire subreddit devoted to just that in particular I need to I need to check again and see if it's like specifically related to um, overwatch I don't think that it would be I mean it could translate to so many different games but like I, that's just it's so cool that like the internet allows you to figure out if you're weird or not you know yep like I I often think, like, how fucking lucky was I to be a teenager and have the internet completely available to me at any time of the day, like, you know, without supervision, because, like, I was so, so deeply fucked up as a teenager. Like, I just had anxiety and obsessive compulsive disorder so badly that it would affect me physically. Like, it would just, it was the worst. But, like, I could go online and be like, Am I fuck like who like what's happening to me? And the internet would be like, this is what's happening to you, and it also happens to me too, you know. And so you kind of get this sense of like, cool, I'm not alone. Um, I'm not so fucked up. This is actually very common. This is what other people you know do to deal with it. I can try out all of these things, you know. And it, it's and it, it wasn't just with like my mental issues as a teenager. It was just everything. It's like. You know, I feel fucking awkward because I'm, you know, overweight and I've got acne and, and I'm having weird feelings, you know, like, what do right. I do? And, yeah. and like, there was. And if it and if it wasn't like a like a community or a subreddit or a website, it was other people online, you know, just just people who were there, people in WoW, especially. It's like, hey, guys, I feel fucking weird in life. And the only thing that makes me feel good is this game. And everybody's like, me, too. You know, and, it, and you're like, oh, cool. And that. Like I don't, I don't know how I would have gotten through all of those formative years without that kind of reassurance and confidence. You know, like it certainly didn't fix anything, like quickly or anything like that. But like, goddamn, you know. Yeah. And there's like, there's so many other interest areas that I don't know that they're necessarily subcultures. So like, for example, the those who are into Dungeons and Dragons, I wouldn't call that a subculture, but I would call that an interest area. But that's one of the areas that you'd have to use as like a, a, a like a, a way to dip into a haven of that kind of thinking, where you can be into fantasy and into um, stories and things like that, and into role playing. But you'd have to find and seek out others who are also into that, which before the internet was so hard to do, you know? Yeah, like you'd have to be just really lucky to find people at school or wherever like in your hometown that felt the way that you did you know i don't know it's just it's so cool and and to all of the people who 
a part of these subcultures that we were talking about tonight or have like the same persuasions like we were talking about like i'm just i'm really glad that the internet is there for them to find their communities and feel safe you know with people who think the same way and to find friends and partners etc cetera, etc cetera. and i think it's cool for you know people who are on the outside of that to be able to you know kind of learn about how they feel and stuff like that and uh i don't know i just before we we go, um, I just want to like uh, apologize. Like, if Fawn or I uh, said anything that was offensive to anybody about anything um, that wasn't our intention, please let us know what we said. Or you know, like we don't we don't want to offend anybody. You know, like but we don't right. know any better. So like you know, if if somebody who does know better would explain to us, you know, why that was wrong, then we can correct yeah, that and yeah. then let other people know. Because like, and for example. What if, what if No Not November is like a real thing and we just spent all of last LB stream with Pat making fun of it? <laughs> I don't like, know, man. I don't think that's the case, but you know what I mean? Like, this is a, this is a complicated area. Um, we obviously are the kind of place that has a lot of fun with a lot of stuff, so clearly this is not a place you should go for your official information. Um, but we all, all we obviously didn't mean any offense if we did. Um, no, we're just we're just trying to be you know and, as, to share what we know about this and and we're opening we the trench coat for you guys. <laughs> just as I often do on the subway in New York City. That's my new job, actually. I was lying about the other job. My new job is a flasher. Congratulations! Hot yet. A, lot of, a lot of money in that. No. <laughs> any money in that? No. But a lot of personal gratification. Okay. How do you put that on your resume? Um, I hang my resume um, on a necklace. <laughs> it sort of like hangs down. I didn't say, how do you put your resume on I... you? I said, how do you put that on your resume? <laughs> well, that's all I need. Just like a piece of paper that says resume. And then I open my coat, my trench coat. And I'm just like, I'm a flasher. And that's what I do. <laughs> Here's my resume. The shaper said there's nowhere to put the tips you get. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a few places. I mean, they still got the coat. They still got the trench coat. That's what I got pockets. Yeah, like inside pockets. You know. Inside pocket. Nature's pocket. Nature's pocket. This is also Nature's... a rough time of year to be a flasher. So, you know, more power to you. Well, I just, I figured, you know, uh, with the climate and everything, like I am a, a hardy Canadian who grew up with no heat in their house, so... I can I can bear the cold pretty well, so I figured like this was my chance to really make a dime <laughs> to differentiate. That American, yep. Sort of corner the market, like, <laughs> flashing. I'm slowly learning where all the warmest parts are of like the New York City subway system. Uh, Any of the heating none, vents? None that of are... this is yeah. <laughs> none of this is true, by the way. Um, I don't know. Being a flasher though, because like you wouldn't have to stay naked for very long. Just long enough to flash, you know? Yeah. There was also, I don't know if this one's a real one or not, but there was a Chuck Palahniuk book, and I might be mispronouncing his name. He's the guy who wrote Fight Club, um, but he also wrote this other book, um, and in it, there was a subculture of people who um, had sex with each other when they would find each other in public places. Uh, the example and the way that the character in the book found it was that he was on a flight and he opened the bathroom door on the flight and found a woman in there like spread legged ready to go and immediately closed the door and like ran away which i think would probably be a realistic reaction to that um yes not knowing that that was like a i don't even know what you'd call it but that I was part like, of the i feel like i'd automatically assume that she was waiting for somebody else and then I'd be like, oh my god, I'm so sorry, you know? Right, right. And then if, if I was that woman, I would be like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. Because that's what it <laughs> makes you like. Like if somebody like walks into a public washroom and opens your stall because you haven't like closed it properly or whatever, right. the Canadian will be like, I am so sorry, as they're sitting on the can. And then the person who opened the door will also be like, I am so sorry, you know? And they'll just, I'm sorry. Yeah. In this, um, the woman was actually offended, and she confronted him about it and said, like, what, am I not good enough for you or something? Like, what, that's not supposed to be how this goes kind of thing. And I don't know, I, I don't, it's, it was a, it's been a long time since I read that, so I don't really remember um, how he was supposed to, like, know. I don't, I don't remember if there was, like, something on the door, or, I can't remember. Is it, like, a, like a noise that they make when they see each other? Like, ah! <laughs> like a... 
Kaka. The universal sign for free use fuckery. <laughs> That's not a real. Is that a real subculture? Though? I don't know. Or is that just in the book? I'm not sure about that. I'm gonna look it up. Okay. I think lagging balls is edging on its own subculture at this point. It's almost been four years, guys. Four years. And uh, it's weird because we just we all keep getting more attractive and smarter and cooler. I don't like. Is there some kind of like elixir in this like podcast community, like elixir of life? I don't. I don't know, but I'm gonna stop looking that up now because it's all porn. It's just porn, porn, porn. And any any version of the phrasing I could think of to try, try and look that up was just all porn. Yes, welcome <laughs> to the internet. I'll save that for after the show. Yeah. Uh, after I've signed off and, and left this uh, call right. far away, I'm not thinking about what you're doing. <laughs> um, I will look up the book, though. Um, but yeah, so... Um, I don't know. I, I feel like I don't know enough about all this stuff. I'd like to know more. I think... Um, I don't know. I think I'm going to start. I mean, I'm sure there's like podcasts for these things like furries and, and bronies and things like that. And I'm sure there's like more than enough people online who are, you know, very willing and very patient to answer questions. Um, I recently started talking to some, well, not started, but talked to somebody on Snapchat who I didn't know who told me a lot about, you know, like his persuasions and all of like the things that he was into and stuff. And the thing that really struck me about him was just like um he was very willing to answer my dumb questions and he would answer them politely but also like give me even more information than i asked for and it was just That's great yeah it was just really cool so i'm sure there's a lot of people out there who are like totally willing to just you know tell you about who they are and who they're especially on the internet Especially on the internet. I met uh, somebody in real life at a Starbucks of all places who was not, had nothing to do with sex or subculture, but I guess maybe a subculture, um, less of a, a sexual oriented subculture though. This guy was like, super super political um like he had his own website his own um he purported it as being a news website um he showed it to me and i looked it up while we were kind of sitting there i was actually whatever it, it, the point is um it was kind of a if you were to make your own website like outside of like one of the really nice templates on like one of the modern ways of doing that it looks like you made your own website you know like it doesn't look that great and it kind of you know, and then it's like the uh, the content on there was like very um, conspiracy theorist type content. So it was like, but he was just like telling me all these like international adventures he'd had and all the all the countries he'd lived in and things like that. So that was that was pretty nuts. So I like that I found somebody that honest like in real life, who just like wanted to tell me all the stories and everything. And I have no idea why he decided that I was the guy to, to like unload all that on, but it was really fun. I'm glad. And I wish I'd run into that more often. Uh, what I did mention was the the blue wolf that I met at the Marriott um, had a tag around his neck that had his um, his Twitter on it. Oh, yeah? And I oh, yeah. and I told him that I was interested in learning more about, you know, furries in general, and he said, well, you know, DM me sometime. And I haven't done that, but, like, I should, you know? Yeah, like I, yeah. do it. I want to know more. And, like, the thing is, like, I don't, I genuinely do not think that I feel like I am part of any of the subcultures that we talked about tonight. I really don't. Because I feel like I'm the sort of person right. who wouldn't feel afraid or hesitate to explore that about myself. Um, and I just, I just don't have it. It's just not in me. Um, so 
the best I can do is just sort of like learn more and appreciate it more. So like, I think I'm going to do that. I think that's going to be some, you know, personal homework for me. And uh, I don't know, maybe maybe, maybe, we can, some... maybe we can get a furry on the show. That'd be awesome. I was gonna say, I would, I would love that. Hell yeah, that'd be great. That'd be really cool. Just interview, ask all the questions that are like the burning questions that are in everybody's mind. Maybe take questions ahead of time, that sort of thing. We'll look into this, guys. Like you know, we haven't planned any of this. We're just kind of talking on the fly here, but um, we'll look into it. Yeah, could be cool. In the meantime, it's just about that time. It has been a hell of a ride. This is a really interesting subject. Totally. Um, and so this weekend um, is the uh, new episode of Lagging Balls. It's coming out. It's going to be really, really good. The podcast. Um, the podcast. Um, Lagging Balls, the podcast, is not uh, visual. It's not available on YouTube. It's only available on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Spotify. Um, and probably other Wherever podcasts. Wherever fine podcasts are sold. Exactly. Yeah. Except that um, But that... Right, so this is the the LBS, the Lagging Ball stream, where we talk about whatever we want. Obviously, the Lagging Balls podcast is where we talk about Blizzard games, um, and the new episode of that uh, is coming out this weekend, and it's going to be really, really good. It's going to be hilarious. Um, that's my personal guarantee, <laughs> or something. Wow. Um, but yeah, so I'm looking forward to that, and thank you guys for hanging out with us. Um, we did start an hour later than usual, and we will be starting an hour later than usual going forward until... Um, we switch the clocks again, uh, just so we don't run into Azeroth Roundtable because we don't like doing that because we like no. watching Azeroth Roundtable. Yeah. yeah, love those guys. And you know, we know a lot of you guys uh, so kindly and generously watch both of our shows, so we don't want to have to make you choose because that would be lame. Um, so we'll just uh, we'll start later from now on. And uh, thank you guys in advance for for watching those yeah. in the future. And thank um, you, yeah. Fist. You're welcome. Thanks for getting better, so we can all have you back. Oh yes, I, st- I tried so hard, and got so far, and I did it. Good job. Thanks. Um, but yeah, so I guess we're not gonna raid anybody, so we'll just let you guys go. Have a great night. Have a great weekend. Um, play lots of games. Take care of yourself, and learn something about a weird subculture. Yeah, do it. Go figure because it out. They aren't that weird after all. And report back. We want to hear all about it in the Discord. We'll see. See you guys later. Have a great night. Thanks for coming, guys.